Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another edition here of Intuitive Angling and thank you very much for swinging by the channel and spending some time with me today. And just, I wanna let you guys know that I definitely do not take it for granted. You guys making time out of your schedules to watch the videos, definitely grateful for that. So big thank you to everybody out there. Guys, today we're gonna to be talking about my favorite springtime swim jig. You really, from about the months of uh, mid-March into early May, this particular setup that I'm gonna show you here, it's a real specialized swim jig, and I'm gonna give, give you guys some tips and advice on how to fish it and what to look for to throw it around. I think it's gonna add up to some good fish for you guys over the next month or so. Also guys, I'd like to invite everybody out there, if you uh, consider to please subscribe here to Intuitive Angling. Uh, right now we've got only 40% of the people that watch the videos are subscribed to the channel. It's free and easy to do that. It's a good way to support the channel. So I'd like to invite everybody to hit that subscribe and notification button, much appreciated. Okay guys, I'm gonna show you what it is and then we're gonna talk about it a little bit more. It's the Megabass Uzo Swimmer Swim Jig. In this particular color, guys, this is a chartreuse white with a little bit of blue in it. And I've got a sort of like an albino colored uh, Megabass three inch spark shad behind it. This is a uh, finesse, finesse little swim jig. And the Uzo Swimmer, the thing that's unique about it, it's got this little spinner on it and added attractant. And I really like it because it's got this nano coated hook on it. It's real slick, super sharp, small diameter, yet stiff nano coat hook on there. This is the best hook that you can possibly use in a swim jig. Nice little fish head design on there, guys. This thing has been a really good producer for me the last two years in the springtime. Now it's a little bit different because it's small. Most This bait is only like three inches long. Most people throw a larger swim jig. They throw like a three eighths ounce or half ounce with a larger trailer on it, like a some type of rage crawl or speed crawl on it. This swim jig setup is about half the size of most swim jigs out there. And guys, I get a ton of bites on this thing and some good ones with it too. This particular color, smaller size like this, downsize profile. Now, first of all, let's talk a little bit about what you want to fish it around. It's obviously a shallow target bait. So I usually, I start throwing it once that water temperature starts to get into the upper 50s. And a lot of times that's sometime in the mid to late March, depending upon what part of the country you're in. And it doesn't matter what lake you're fishing. I don't care if you're fishing a grass lake in Texas or Florida, or if you're fishing up here in the Ozarks or whatever, the only thing that you have to do with this thing is fish it around whatever available shallow cover you have in the lake. If you got rocky banks, fish it around rocky banks. If you got lay down trees, fish it around lay down trees or stumps. If you got shallow grass, fish it around the shallow grass. You're talking about targeting fish in less than four feet of water with this particular small swim jig setup. Now, most of the time, since it is smaller, I use it on a little bit lighter tackle. Um, I'm fishing it most of the time on that Mega Bass Perfect Pitch Rod. Uh, usually got 17 pound, 15 to 17 pound test Seaguar and Vizex line. And also guys, I'll link this bait and the trailers and everything. If you guys would like to get this particular jig, um, I'll put my Tackle Warehouse uh, link in the description, you know, with the swim jig where you guys can get it if you want to use that link. Um, but anyway, it's more of a, it's not like the, you know, 50 pound braid, like a lot of guys use with swim jigs, usually 15 to 17 pound test fluorocarbon line. So the um, main thing about this, guys, I want to keep this in sight and you've got to have the right water clarity. This particular color right here specifically is designed for a little bit more off-colored water. So I usually throw it in water visibility that is less than three feet. Ideally, if you guys gave me a perfect situation to throw it in, I would say a foot and a half to two foot of clarity is perfect for this particular swim jig as far as how it glows in the water. It does put out a nice glow with the, uh, you know, the albino trailer on there and the brighter skirt. But I like about, again, foot and a half of a foot and a half or two foot of visibility. I prefer an overcast day. You don't necessarily have to have overcast, but you do have to have shade for this thing to work very good. It's not gonna work very good just reeling it through the water column and a foot and a half or two foot of visibility out in the bright sun like that. So cloudy conditions or throwing it in and around shade, keeping it in sight. Most of the time what I do is, you know, I'll just make a, I'll just cast around that shallow target there. I'll keep my rod tip high and I'm just shaking the rod and reeling it like that. You know, I don't like to reel a swim jig, just reeling it. I usually like to shake it, you know, to get the thing where it just sort of, you know, goes up and down a little bit like that, just gives it some action. Tail's got a lot of action, but I always like to shake it 
And um, main thing about it, guys, I always do a lot better with the swim jig by keeping it in sight or barely out of sight and then pulling it up. If I throw it out there like next to a rocky bank or next to a lay down tree, I don't care what the visibility is. I want to be able to see that jig occasionally. I don't have to see it all the time. So say for example, if I reel it up by a lay down tree and then I drop it down maybe that far and I lose sight of it, I'll bring it back up to where I can see it. But you always want to keep the swim jig in visual sight most of the time. It just seems like the bass hit it a little bit better. But anyway, guys, it's something different. It's a color a lot of people don't throw. It's a size a lot of people don't throw. Gets a lot of bites. I catch some good fish on it too. Really good all spring long. Again, I'll put all the links in the description if you guys want to get you one. And uh, I think if you guys try it, it'll add up to some good fish for y'all. So hope it helps out. We'll see y'all.